many people have now become aware of Claude Code as one of the most effective and powerful tools for Vibe coding. You type in a request, it writes the code and off you go. But very few people know how to actually leverage it to its maximum capabilities. In this video, I'm going to share with you all of the tips and tricks that will help you not only get the most out of Vibe coding, but also get the most out of Claude code itself. The goal is to help you unlock new capabilities, speed up your workflow, and make you more efficient when it comes to creating code and software in the modern age. So in case you haven't heard of Claude code, I'll quickly explain what it is. Claude code is Anthropic's terminal or CLI based coding companion. Unlike a typical IDE, it doesn't give you a flashy interface or buttons to click. Instead, it sits quietly in your terminal, reading and writing files, running commands and offering explanations. The key difference is that it doesn't just execute, it can plan, ask clarifying questions and even spin up specialized sub agents to help with particular tasks. Now it is worth mentioning that OpenAI has its own equivalent version of Claude Code called Codex CLI, which I'll likely make a dedicated video on the future. Up until recently, Claude Code has completely dominated this particular area, but now OpenAI's equivalent is starting to really gain traction and could be a worthy competitor. So now that you know what it is, the next question is what can it do? The first major capability is plan mode. Normally, Claude will just go ahead and implement suggestions. But in plan mode, however, it stops short. It analyzes the problem, drafts a plan step by step, and asks you to approve it before touching the code. This is really useful when you're working on a new project, making big refactors, or trying something that carries risk. On the other end, you can switch to auto accept, where it just runs changes without asking. That's handy for repetitive fixes, but less safe for larger changes. Then there's thinking mode, which adjusts how deeply Claude reasons about a problem. By prompting it to think hard, think harder, or even ultra think, you can nudge it to spend longer reasoning internally before replying. The effect is subtle, but powerful. On tricky design problems or security sensitive reviews, it can surface trade-offs you might otherwise miss. And when you combine thinking mode with plan mode, you get the sweet spot. Extended reasoning, but still with human approval before execution. Also, a recent update has made thinking mode more transparent. Now, when you use one of those keywords like think hard, think harder, or ultra think, Claude code highlights the extent of the deeper reasoning it's applying. This means you can actually see how much extra thought is being allocated, which makes it clearer when using this setting and what level of depth you're working with. In terms of specific models, Claude code gives you multiple options. When you run the slash model command, you can choose to run everything in Opus, everything in Sonnet, split usage so that Opus handles the first 20% of your workload and Sonnet handles the rest, or use the most popular Opus plan mode. This last option is particularly powerful. It uses Opus, the more nuanced and capable model for planning when you're in plan mode, and then hands things over to Sonnet for the actual implementation. The balance works well because Opus does the analytical heavy lifting, figuring out how to solve the problem, while Sonnet, which is still very capable, follows those instructions for the implementation phase. This means you don't exhaust your usage limits on the more pricey Opus model. And for those on the higher tier $200 plan, you might be able to simply use Opus all the time without worrying about quotas. But for many, Opus plan offers the best trade-off. Opus for deep reasoning, Sonnet for efficient execution. And because Sonnet is very reliable at following instructions, you don't lose much in quality when it comes to actual code writing. Next, we have slash commands, which is the next hidden gem in Claude code. Press slash at the start of any prompt and you get a menu of options. Slash status to check which model and mode you're in. Slash permissions to see what tools Claude has allowed to use. Slash review for a quick code review. And slash PR comments to summarize pull requests and so on. You can even create your own, a custom slash command, which is basically a reusable prompt stored as a markdown file. It can include arguments, pull in bash output like git diff, 
and even specify which model or tools it should use. For example, you might create slash commit that always generates a clean conventional commit message after reviewing the stage changes. It saves you typing, but more importantly, it makes your workflow repeatable. These slash commands can be stored at the project level or globally so that they are available in all current and future projects. You can also make them available for other people working on your team. Another feature many overlook is memory. You can teach Claude your coding conventions and project rituals by writing them into a claude.md file at the root of your repository. This could include things like use UK English, always write unit tests with new code, or run PNPM test before committing. You can keep global memory and settings in your home directory or project specific ones in .claude slash settings.json. There's even a local version that isn't committed to Git, so you can have personal tweaks without polluting the repo. It's the closest thing to Claude remembering your style and conventions across sessions. For larger projects, you can go further by creating sub-agents. These are like mini Claudes with their own context and job description. One might be a dedicated code reviewer, another a test runner. Each one has its own system prompt and permissions. You can call them in when needed, keeping the main session clean. The good thing with most of these Claude code features is that you only need to create these things once and Claude can even help you with this creation process. After that, you can make use of them at any point. Alongside that, hooks let you automate guardrails. For example, you can configure Claude to automatically run a linter after any file edit or to block certain shell commands unless you explicitly override. It's a way of keeping things safe without constant micromanagement. I haven't made too much use out of hooks yet, but I do use memory slash commands and subagents very regularly. And once you get fluent with the keyboard shortcuts, quickly toggling between plan mode and editing your last prompt or switching models, you start to notice just how fluid the whole workflow feels, despite the fact that using a terminal might not be something you're immediately familiar with. So taken together, these features shift Claude code from a novelty into some serious coding environment. You can, for example, plan first with Opus in plan mode, ask it to think hard or ultra think about design trade-offs, approve the plan, then let Sonnet execute. You can run hooks and tests automatically, and even then commit with a custom slash command. And finally, call in a specialized sub-agent for a code review. That's not just code generation, it's a repeatable process that feels close to pair programming with someone who's cautious, articulate, and adaptable. I'm personally a big fan of doing a small amount of work up front that saves you a lot of time and reduces repetition and friction later on. Of course, there are still some risks. Auto accept mode can make sweeping changes without you noticing. Permissions, if left too broad, can expose you to destructive shell commands, and while thinking mode can surface better answers, it can also burn through tokens quickly if you overuse it. In other words, Claude is safest when treated as a member of your development team and you being the manager. Give it context, give it boundaries, and then trust it to carry out the work within those constraints. And with any professional software team, someone would naturally review the code to ensure that it meets requirements. So it does ideally require some kind of human approval if you want to produce the most secure and robust code. As it stands, I think Claude Code is the most powerful and effective tool for Vibe coding. And I did say earlier that the Codex CLI from OpenAI is catching up and may even soon overtake. But if that happens, I'll be sure to keep you updated in any kind of future video. And even as AI gets better and Claude models become more effective at coding, this tool will still be able to leverage those models. This is a continually growing ecosystem that really facilitates software engineering in the modern AI age. So yes, you can use Claude code as a vibe coder straight out of the box. But if you take the time to explore its deeper features like plan mode, thinking mode, slash commands, memory, subagents, and hooks, you start to see its real potential.
And that's a far more powerful vision of AI coding than just typing prompts and hoping for the best, which has been the case up until recently. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you can like and subscribe. And also feel free to subscribe to my weekly AI newsletter, which you'll find a link to in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.